Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Tutor New Test Prep. Today we'll be going over lesson number 13 on how to use Desmos for the digital SAT math. Mean and median. Let's get started. Okay, so if you guys didn't know, you could find the mean or the median of any list by using the functions built into Desmos. So I'm going to show you this first problem. All I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the word mean and then a parenthesis and then the numbers in the list. So 6, 10, 13, 2, 15, 22, 10. Just make sure you're putting commas in between them. 4, 4, 4. Then I'm going to close that parenthesis. And it tells me I have a mean of 9. So that's how you use the mean function. Let's do a median example. So let me refresh. So very similar, what we're going to do is we're going to type in the word median, and then we're going to type in the number 71, 72. Make sure you're putting commas between them. 73, 76, 77, 79, 83. <laughs> 87, and 93. Then I press enter and it gives me a median of 77. That is our answer, answer choice B. So you're probably thinking, that doesn't really save a lot of time, right? Um, to my knowledge, I'll make a separate video if I end up realizing this. To my knowledge, there's no way to use Desmos to do the mean and median of a frequency table quickly. That would be a huge time saver. However, on the digital SAT, they've brought back kind of these um, missing number word problems, and they tell you stuff about the mean and the median. So I'm going to show you two of those. And these functions can be really helpful if you cleverly apply them for these problems. So here's a digital SAT problem. Um, take a second to pause this guy, see if you can figure it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make f of x equal to the mean of these numbers, 43, 45, 44, 43. 38, 39, 40, 46, and 40. And it tells me that the mean is greater than, and notice how I added, oh, I forgot actually. So those are the nine numbers. So the 10th number we don't know, so we're going to put x. And if you actually zoom out, it'll make a nice picture of mean as a function of the tenth number. That's going to be really helpful. So the question tells us that the mean is greater than 42. So I'm going to write y is greater than 42. Then it also tells us that all the integers are less than 60. So I'm going to write x, the integer, must be less than 60. OK, so look at my picture. So the, so the solution, it's got to be in this blue-green area. So it's got to be in here somewhere. So what was really important is that we realize that both the values are integers and it also says the mean is an integer. So both the mean and the missing number have to be an integer. So I'm going to make a table f of x1. 
and I'm going to type in integers counting back. So it can't be 60. It's got to be less than 60. So let's do 59, 58, 57. Now I'm just going to press enter a bunch of times. 56, 55. See, I'm still not getting a, the Y value is the mean. So I'm not getting an integer value for the mean. So I got to keep going. 54, nope. 53, nope. 43.1, not an integer. 52. 52 is the largest possible integer from data set A. So I started at the largest possible one, 59, and I counted backwards until I got an integer mean. So that gave me the answer of 52, and that's right. Okay, so you see it's like, oh, it's like we can now plot the mean as a function of a missing number or the median as a function of a missing number. So you can solve lots of problems like this. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of practice questions on the digital SATs. So I pulled one more that I just found like off the internet. Off the internet. Um, so let's do that one together. Pause this video, see if you can do it. So um, just to save myself some typing, I'm going to make a list using square brackets. Um, 10, 12, 26, x, x. And this doesn't mean anything, so I'm going to shut that off. So I'm going to plot um, y equals the mean of a. Because it tells me the mean and median are equal. So I'm going to plot y equals the mean of a and y equals the median of list a. And there we go. Okay. So see how it's got three solutions, 1, 16, and 41. So those are all the possible values of x. So now it wants the sum. So I'm going to add them up. 1 plus 16 plus 41. And I get 58. 58 is the answer. Wow, that is really helpful. <laughs> Guys, even if you use this for the more straightforward questions where it just gives you a list, don't be afraid to use these functions. There's no sense. They always do this on the test where they put the numbers out of order and people make a careless mistake calculating the median. Just don't risk it. Just take the 15 seconds it takes to type it in and make sure you're getting the answer right when you're taking the test. And if you can be really clever, you can use these guys to solve more complex types of problems. Okay, that completes the lesson. Please like and subscribe for more digital SAT math content. If you are interested in my tutoring services, the link to my website will be in the description. I tutor all sections of the SAT and all math subjects from about 7th grade to AP slash early college level. Thanks for stopping by and good luck studying.